Hello again, this is Haven, and I am going to do another tutorial here in Maya. This is number three, and this one's going to be all about selecting and um, manipulating objects. So it's really fairly simple. A left mouse click does a lot. Left mouse clicking will actually, um, let me turn that off. Left mouse clicking will just uh, select whatever you have selected. So how do you pick the select tool though? If you're working on something, uh, you need to come back and use the select tool. Well, the shortcut key is Q. Remember I was talking about the QWERTY toolbox, which is over here? It's Q-W-E-R-T-Y. Well, we're only going to concentrate on uh, the Q-W-E-R, and I'll tell you about the, the other two, although I don't use them very often. Um, these, uh, Q stands for picking. Uh, making a selection so you can just click on things um, also you can click on this top arrow over here and you can see that when you hover it it does say select tool so you can just select things um, it doesn't do anything different than hitting the queue it's the exact same thing I guess whether you like to press a button or hit a key it doesn't really matter another way of selecting things is by uh, left mouse clicking and dragging a box and anything in the box at all is going to get selected. So you can see all three of these things were selected. I can do a box here and just those two are selected. You will notice that there's different colors here. If I do all four of them, I get just one green one and three white ones. Well, what this means is that the green was chosen last. That's all there is to it. It makes... Um, for um, a difference later on but right now it doesn't so uh, just know that the green just means that it was selected last nothing more at the moment you can like I said you can uh, individually click on them to select them if you want to say select two items the outside two items or two items that are far apart from each other you can use your shift button and hold down shift and select the next item you want to select and now you have both of them. A shift again and you can continue selecting or if you click on something already selected it will deselect it. So we can think of our shift button in this case as an add or minus button. It will add or subtract to. It also does it by way of dragging and drawing a box. So you see I have these two selected, these two not selected. If I hold my shift button and go over all four of them with my box, the opposite two will be selected, the two selected will be deselected. So again, the shift is like a plus or a minus button. To deselect everything, just simply click into a blank part of the scene and nothing is selected anymore. So that's really fairly simple to use. The next one that we have down isn't a shortcut key, but it is the lasso select. And with this one, when you click on the lasso select, you can draw around what you want selected. So if I want those two selected, I just kind of drew a little hook on the end of that selection to catch both of them. And <laughs> they're not selected. Now why would that be not selected? Hmm, I do not know why that did not select for us. Maybe because I was holding my shift button the first time and I shouldn't have been. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm hold Two of them are selected and I'm holding my shift to add. So I've added that, hold shift again, and it deselects it. So you can simply just lasso a little area around and there we go. We've got that one selected because it wasn't. Um, the next uh, tool that we have is the W, and W stands for move. So W is the move tool, and if I click W, you will see that whatever I have selected now has the manipulator on it for moving things around. All right, and this is just like any other program that has 3D capabilities of moving things. Uh, this is exactly the same. So um, you can come here and either click it, again in this QWERTY toolbox or by hitting the W. 
So how does this work? Well, there's a few parts to here, and um, let me show you what they are. First, you have the arrows. You have the X, Y, and Z. And in case you forget what X, Y, and Z means, you have it over here in your little window. But an easy way to remember it is X, Y, Z equals R, G, B. R, G, B, of course, is red, green, blue. And it goes in order with X, Y, and Z. So that's one fast way of remembering it. Whichever one of these arrows you have selected is going to highlight in yellow. So if I click on the red and I pull on it in either direction, I have a yellow arrow now. Okay? If I click on the Z up and down, I now have a yellow arrow there instead. So this um, manipulator is really nice to move anything along an axis. You can keep it constrained to that axis. What we also have are these little bitty, um, let's see if I can find the third one here. There it is. Okay. It was a little hard to see. But what we have are these three planes here. Uh, we have the red one, which means that um, you can think of it as if you choose the red, it won't move on red. So if I click on the red and I move this, I'm moving it along the X or the Y and the Z, but I can't move it along the X. So if I have the blue one, which is the Z axis, it will move along the Y and the X, but not the Z. Okay? And then the same, of course, goes for the green, which is Y. It'll now move on the red and the blue, or the Z and the X. Okay? If you click here inside the very center of it, this yellow outline goes into that um, center box. That means you could just free move it anywhere you want, X, Y, and Z. But it is dependent on your camera view. So it's like I can't move it away from me and I can't move it closer to me. Um, so I can only move it up and down and side to side according to my camera view, okay? And that's simple, that's how the, um, that is how the actual move tool works. Nice and easy, huh? All right, so what we have next is the E. And the E is for scaling. Oh, I'm sorry. The E is for rotating. And we also have a rotate button down here in our QWERTY box. And you can see E is a shortcut key. So I'm just going to click on rotate. And now you'll see I have a rotate widget. Um, around the cube and this is cool because it works just like the move tool does you have three different um, rings red green and blue they stand for X Y and Z and this allows you to rotate it around a very specific axis so you can move it around just the green the yellow or the red and the blue X Y and Z this bigger circle, it's a light blue color when I'm not hovering over it, this kind of lets you move it according to your camera view. So it's almost like that center box is on the move tool. You're moving it according to uh, your camera. And if you click anywhere inside of here, not clicking on one of these axes uh, rings, but just in the blank area, you can free uh, rotate it. You can rotate it in any fun direction that you want to. Granted, that's not as useful as um, as doing it on the axis because you know it's just kind of free floating there, free flipping around. Um, the next tool that we have is going to be the R key, and the R is for scaling. Uh, so you can hit R, or you can come to the toolbox here and hit this scaling tool and this has exactly what the other one has it has the ability to scale along one axis um, all th you know all of the three axes you can uh, constrain your scaling to you can do it by the planes as well and there is a third plane here let me camera on there it is so we can scale it when you pick press on the green again it's like scaling it on the X and the Y but not the green okay 
So it's not actually growing in this direction at all. all right. The blue, of course, will eliminate the z-axis. So it scales on the other two. And again, this one has a little center um, uh, area that you can grab as well. And this will scale it uniformly along all three axes. So that is how the scale, the move, and the rotate tools work. I did tell you that I would tell you about the, um, the T and the Y. The T calls up the transform um, tool. Um, and see this little white square at the top of my um, arrow here, of my cursor? That's the tool. So when you usually when you're selecting something, it's on so you can see what it is that you're clicking on. And you can actually um, turn that off. There we go. Now it's turned off. So that hitting T just makes that show up. And... I'm telling you, I really don't know what good that is for sometimes, except for when you want to get in close. Um, the um, Y tool just recalls your last tool. So if I hit Y, um, it shows you that I picked the um, Show Transform um, Manipulator before. So that's all that those are for. We don't use those too often at all. Now I do want to show you in another... Um, uh, another movie how you can uh, uh, a little bit of things that you're going to come to see when you manipulate and scale things all together until then have fun remember to subscribe and like